Hi everybody and welcome. And today I'm going to do my preferred worst to best of the Beatles. So without any further ado, let's get into the swing of things. Okay friends, before we start, let me just put it out there. There are no bad Beatle albums. Okay, this is just my preferred list my most played, if you like, Beatle albums, from my least played to my most played. Um, using the British release albums, uh, the 13 British release albums from the Beatles. Okay, so that being said, my least played Beatle album coming in at number 13 would be... Surprise, surprise. No, not really. The Yellow Submarine. Now, the... This was released in January 1969. It's a good album. Uh, I guess the only reason it's come in as my least played is because I don't really play the second side, which was just an original film score composed and orchestrated by George Martin. Um, but there are some great songs on uh, this album. Um, that being All You Need Is Love, uh, All Together Now, and... Only a Northern Song was actually meant to be on the Sgt. Pepper album, but was held back for release on this album. Interesting. Anyway, we're kicking off on number 13 with the Yellow Submarine. Okay, coming in at number 12, with the Beatles. Released in November 1963, their second studio album, but was the first solo composition for George Harrison on this album with Don't Bother Me. Other notable songs on this album are All My Loving and I would suggest Money. Love that song too. Anyway, number 12. Okay, coming in at number 11, Please Please Me, the Beatles debut album was released in uh, March 1963, was recorded in one straight 13-hour recording session. It's crazy. Most of the songs are taken from what they were doing live in the cavern and in Hamburg. And it really captures the essence of uh, how it all started for them um, in the early days. Interesting notes that uh, John sang Twist and Shout at the end of the recording studio, uh, at the end of the recording session, because he knew after he sang that song, there'll be nothing left of him vocally. And um, so all the way through recording this album, he kept taking throat lozenges and gargling milk to try and help him uh, stay in the game to record uh, Twist and Shout. Which they did, and it took one take. Other notable songs on this album, I Saw Her Standing There. Great album, good rock and roll album. Okay, now we get the top ten. Coming in at number ten, Beatles for Sale. Was um, released in December 1964 and was their fourth studio album in two years. You could say it was in the height of the Beatlemania, and looking at the cover, you can see that it was starting to get to them. They were getting tired. They'd been pulled from every post to pillar. Um, great, great album. Uh, love the fold outs. It's really good. Um, yeah, even though they were still in the height of the Beatlemania, uh, they still were punching out great songs. Notably on this album, I would say, I'm a loser, every little thing. But, you know, there's so many great songs on here. Kansas City, Eight Days a Week. That's a great album. You could see they were starting to get tired, but still, still a great album. Number 10. Okay, and coming in at number 9, Help. The Beatles. Yeah, their second motion picture soundtrack from their film, 
obviously, was released in August 1965 and is their fifth studio album. You can notice on the uh, album cover they're using semaphore, but they're not actually spelling out help. That's um, They're actually just say, spelling out N-U-J-B. So it doesn't actually sp spell out anything. But um, yeah, many people think they're actually saying help, but they're not. Um, notable songs on this album, I would have to say, are Help. Ticket to Ride, and of course, the most covered song in history is on this album, Yesterday. Good album, very good. Number nine. Coming in at number eight. The Beatles' A Hard Day's Night. This, this album was their third album and was released in July 1964 was notable for the fact that it was the first time and the only time that every song on this album was composed by Lennon and McCartney. And being the third album, it just shows you how far they had come as songwriters and just showcasing the development of their songwriting abilities. Great album. Uh, great movie too. Um, but yeah... Number eight. Okay, coming in at number seven was not technically an album in the UK till 1987 when they released all the Beatles LPs onto CD and then they classed it as an album. So I don't actually have it on vinyl. The Magical Mystery Tour. Released in December 1967 was originally an EP in England and is the soundtrack to a TV show that uh, the Beatles uh, put together and was broadcast on Boxing Day in 1967. Very mixed reviews. It was a very strange period in time for the Beatles, but love the songs. <laughs> Just great songs. I mean... Songs such as uh, The Magical Mystery Tour, Strawberry Fields, All You Need Is Love, Penny Lane, I Am The Walrus. That alone would be a reason to have this in your album collection. So, my number seven, The Magical Mystery Tour. Coming in at number six. The Beatles, Let It Be. Yeah, this was, re this was recorded in January 1969 and um, was not released until May 1970, a month after they had officially broken up. It uh, was part of a, a film that Paul McCartney had envisaged for the Beatles to showcase the Beatles starting from scratch, a whole album. But a lot of tension had grown by this time and it was a very difficult project for them to do. Uh, when it was finished, a lot of producers tried putting it together, but eventually it fell to Phil Spector, who finalized the album for its release in May 1970. Good album. Great album, moving album, emotional album. The idea of the album was, and the movie was just to show the Beatles getting back to their roots, um, which I think it it does in in many ways. There's even a song on here on the album, "One After Nine Oh Nine. Now that was one of the first uh, collaborations that Lennon and McCartney had done in songwriting, which was way back in 1959. So it took over 10 years for it to become onto an album, <laughs> but it was well worth the wait. Other notable songs on this album are Across the Universe, The Long and Widening Road, and of course, Get Back. It's a, it's a great album. It's always a difficult album to listen to, 
in this in the emotional sense knowing where they were and what was about to happen well indeed what had happened by the time it was released but great album let it be number six getting into the top five coming in at number five one of the most iconic albums Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Heart Club's band. Probably perceived in history as the birth of the concept album. This album took over 700 hours to complete. It was the band's eighth studio album and was released in May 1967. And was the first time that a band had released their full lyrics on the back of the album cover. Not many people know that. With a great pull out of the band there in their Sgt. Pepper uniforms. Fantastic album. Really, really is great album. Notable songs on this album? You'd have to say uh, Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds and of course A Day in the Life. Fantastic album. Number five. And coming in at number four, Rubber Soul. The Beatles' sixth studio album and was released in December 1965. And Rubber Soul marked a progression in the band's treatment of the album format to an artistic platform, an approach they continue to develop in Revolver and Sgt. Pepper leading to a widespread focus away from just singles and onto creating consistently high quality songs on, a, on the album as a whole, which this album does tremendously well. High quality from the start to finish, this album really is. Notable songs on this, I would have to say, Drive My Car and In My Life. Two fantastic songs. The whole album's fantastic. Rubber Soul, number four. And coming in at number three. The Beatles' White Album, as it is referred to now, affectionately. Probably the Beatles' most diverse musical styles on a album ever and is considered by many as the work of fractured geniuses. You could tell on this album that the bands were more than happy to go about recording their songs without the other members of the group. You could say the beginning of the end for the Beatles started with this album. But I just love this album. I really do. It's... I love the diversity. Uh, everything is just really, really great album. Uh, yes, there are probably some stuff on here. Um, could have been left out and made one super album. But no, I like it as a double album. I like it as it is. I love it as it is. My number three album, The White Album. And you know, considering how we lost John, John Lennon, it's chilling to think he wrote Happiness is a Warm Gun after seeing that title on a gun magazine. And the magazine were playing off a phrase used by the Peanuts cartoon, Happiness is a Warm Puppy. And ironically, that, that song, Happiness is a Warm Gun, was one of the few songs on the album that the Beatles all played in their in their Beatle configuration, if you like, you know, with John and George on guitar, Paul on bass and Ringo on drums. That song and also um, Yeah Blues was another one. There were very few songs on this album that the Beatles used their Beatle configuration, if you like. But yeah. Uh, Fantastic album. Notable songs for this album. Whilst My Guitar Gently Weeps. Dear Prudence. 
Back in the USSR, just a handful. Okay, and coming in at number two, Revolver. Now never, simply never, has an album collectively done so much to change the very concept of how sound could be produced. A beautiful album, a stunning masterpiece. And it was the first time an album had featured backwards recording of a guitar with I'm Only Sleeping. And, uh, and was released in August 1966. The Beatles' seventh studio album and the first one to open with a George Harrison song, The Taxman. Great pumping song. Now, with George Harrison having ri written The Taxman, you would assume that he plays that savage lead guitar on this song. But you'd be wrong. It was Paul McCartney who took lead guitar on that song. And other notable songs on this album is Tomorrow Never Knows. Oh, great song. Eleanor Rigby, I'm Only Sleeping. It, it, it really is an awesome album. In fact, if there's anybody out there who has never listened to a Beatles album from start to finish, this would be the album I would put you on first. If you've never listened to a Beatles album, this would be the one I would recommend you listen to first. Really, it is that good. If you listen to this album and it doesn't work for you, leave the rest of them alone. Because if this doesn't do it for you, nothing will. Okay, and the time has come for my favourite Beatles album. And I guess this album has turned me on from the very first time I heard it until every time I keep playing it. It just doesn't dissipate. I love this album. Coming in at number one, Abbey Road. The recordings for this album Unfortunately, it would be the last time that all four Beatles participated together. It was released in September 1969. Their 11th studio album was indeed recorded after their last um, album release, which was uh, Let It Be. This one was recorded after that album. So this is the last time the Beatles recorded an album together. And wow, what a final album. The A side of this album is your traditional release with um, distinctive and unrelated songs with such killer tracks as John Lennon's Come Together and I Want You, uh, George Harrison's Something, Paul McCartney's Oh Darling. I mean, you could say that George Harrison really came to his peak in writing abilities with this album with two such amazing songs with something and here comes the sun now here comes the sun opens the b-side and the b-side is a complete musical masterpiece with a complete cohesive medley all the way through it it's amazing it wow it, if you've never heard it, you're missing. You're missing out completely. The B-side on this album alone. Whew, no words. Ringo himself had to be convinced to play a, that now iconic drum solo on the, the song The End. And speaking of uh, solos... The three guitar attack solos, which followed um, Ringo's drum solo, with uh, Paul, George and John taking two bars each, was recorded live in one take. It's, um, it's amazing. It really is. Again, please, I applaud you. If you've never listened to this album, listen to this album, my friends. 
It is an amazing masterpiece. It really is. Iconic in every sense of the word. Thoroughly love it. Well, friends, come to the end. My number one choice for a Beatles album will be the iconic Abbey Road. Thank you for watching, friends, and I hope to see you again soon.